Oh, that you style know? doesn't work? Well, yeah. you, you work. Either you work or you don't work. <laughs> I'm starting to reach out now and and talk to a lot of people, which I'm really grateful for. You know, like I I spoke to recently uh, UFC UFC fight coach uh, John Hackleman. Um, okay. Do, I, yeah, do you know who he is? Oh yeah, I mean me and John go way way back. Yeah, the pit man, right? So um, being a being a karate guy himself, uh, Kaju Kempo guy, I said, listen, uh, what's your take on kata? I don't. I got rid of it. He says, but when people do want to learn it, he goes, the way I teach it is I wouldn't take the whole, I wouldn't take a lot of moves from the sequence. I would look at it as a toolbox. And I'm kind of summarizing here, but he says, I look at it as a toolbox and I would pick and choose certain moves and then put it in the context of striking, grappling, takedown defense. And, and, and he says, I'll put it in that mix and pressurize it. And if I can pressurize it and it stands up to striking, grappling, and takedown defense, he goes, I think it's past the test. Right. And, and and so that's that's what he said, you know, his take on, on, on Kata. What's your take on that and what's your take on its functionality? Well, I think it's a less useful drill, to be honest with you, because it's a solo drill. Yeah. So can you get as much solo as you can with a partner? Right. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did it serve a purpose if I was alone on some small offshoot Okinawan island and I had no one else to train with? Or after injury, I did like fake Tai Chi and fake Kata when my knees hurt this yeah. summer or 20 years ago when I had an appendectomy. I could barely move off the couch and I'm trying to stretch the muscles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. can serve some purposes. Yeah. Um, can you get as much as uh, Kata is not really a drill, like a two person drill? Probably right. not. Quite, quite yeah. honestly, you're not getting feedback. You're not yeah. feeling the other person's balance. Yeah probably cannot get as much uh, out of it is it completely useless no i'm not huge on kata i mean i used to do my taekwondo forms uh and i'll still but i mix max them in my head now i play on the back porch sometimes i mean especially with like everything that's gone on in the world like and my injuries i i can't be doing jujitsu i try to like to do a little stretching routine and some stuff and i kind of do fake kata on my back <laughs> porch but i think it can be a tool and I think it's been an overused tool, I guess. Can you get some bunkai uh, out of it? I've watched some of Abernathy's stuff off and on, and some of the things, things he comes up with is okay. A lot of other people, I've seen some stuff, and it's, like, really stretching. It's, like, mm -hmm. really far-fetched. Like, we're trying to take this thing and make this all, like, this was designed 100 years ago in Okinawa to take out the UFC fighter with that, like... <laughs> We're stretching things a little bit. I don't like revisionist his history. It's yeah, yeah. Some of it's very good, and some of it's stretching things a little bit. Yeah, you see, my my take my take is I I I would agree on the stretching part. Um, but you know, I uh, I have a lot of friends uh in the practical karate community that are 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 doing pretty good pretty good work in terms of. You know, they take the kata as as a tool set, and then they just spar with it and put it in different scenarios and and see what works and see what doesn't, right? And to me, that's healthy, right? Um, but you know, the question is, you know, do you need kata to do that? Um, I would say no. You don't you don't need it. But you know, the thing is, like as as a as a traditionalist, you know, it's kind of like having a I I tell a lot of my good friends this. It's like it's like having all this expensive expensive old equipment in your basement okay uh like so let's just say you know either fitness equipment or electronic equipment and you don't have any uh instruction manual um but you you know that it's got value and it's there and you you've acquired it and you just don't want to throw it out type of thing so no, you just you find some to throw it out, it, right? you should yeah. be getting insight from it yeah right but the point is you should be getting insight from it yep. tidbits oh that helped me I, I did watch one of your videos uh, breaking down uh, kata. Yeah. I think it's the same one Chinzo Machida did 
about calf kick defense. The same mm-hmm. motion. I think it's Okinawan, uh, mm-hmm. where your, your lower leg kind of whips. You did the cross yeah. step. Okay. Yeah. And then it's the like lower. step. In step. So and you, kick in. Yeah. yeah, you did it from a more sideways stance. Right. And came at it from a more traditional karate uh, but you came up for some reasons to kind of whip your leg and reposition there where like I could pull it back here and then sidekick the support knee of the guy. Correct. Right. Correct. So that's your interpretation. Yep. Shinzo Machida comes up with that. Is that as a possible defense when you're more square as an MMA fighter against the calf kick, which is basically the same thing I did same in my calf kick, calf kick videos back in 2012. I yep. said, it's like three ways, best ways, check it. You could lift over it and let it go underneath or you can loose leg it if you're in a good square stable stance. That's how you fight, not nice. a boxing sideways stance. But if you're nice and square, you can loose leg your leg. And I mean, there's going to take some damage, but by taking the weight off of you can go here and go into a two three two combination right off of it. So um, I think it's the same kata or at least the same motion you guys are, have bro- uh, broken down. Yeah, so not mo- Nahanchi or Teki in, in Shotokan is called Nahanchi. Yeah. Nahanchi in uh, Nahanchi Kata or Teki. Teki in Shotokan, it's called Teki. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that was the one, and you both came up with good things out of it and different things from different stances, really. Thank because you. Because the more modern take, we're a little more square and getting hit more uh, straight on. And they're like, well, the guy's here, and he kicks at me, and I can lift my leg here, and I can kick out his support knee. Which you see in my, like, Sistema low kick defense video, you might want to take a look at I yes, have, I have interesting. I have two videos: Sistema defense to low kicks, defend Sistema de, de, uh, defense to above the belt kicks, and yeah. it's some interesting stuff that most people in the sportive world don't think of. Right, right. But now, if I'm hitting the back of the head and there's five guys surrounding me and I'm falling into the guy, uh, there's there's stuff you might do differently than like, okay, everything's perfect copacetic. We're in a fighting for 15 minutes or a sport thing in the Olympics where, you know, it's different than the variables and different angles. Oh, that's, that's it. That, that's the answer right there. So you see like, so, okay. So sensitivity, have a base and have the ability, the adaptability. You need to be adaptable, right? Like, like if you like, have spinal structure, yes. you give up your structure, if you bend over and let me guillotine you knee in the head easy, I can cut the nagi you. I can do everything. Yeah. If yeah. you don't have balance, you have nothing. That's right. So you got to have, and if you don't have spinal structure, honestly, you don't have any power. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to have strong spinal alignment. Yeah. If I can take you out of alignment, I just took you down energy efficiently. I broke your structure. So this is like a, 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 breaking structures like a thing from Sistema, but you know it applies just all the human body. So if you don't have that spinal structure you won't be able to adapt. You know, if I'm too hungover and like this, that might be great if it's only sport boxing, but as soon as you add knees and (laughs) knee up the chin, that's why MMA is kind of so beautiful, even better back in my day when it was no whole barred and you could kick a knee on the head, knee the head on the ground and all that. It, it it kept things even more real, a little more dangerous, but, but more real to keep the wrestler worried. If I spoil, I can knee him in the head. You know, there's a certain beauty to that what's what's your uh along the same lines over here what's your take on fusing traditional martial arts with combat sports with combatives like i can tell you my take really quickly and then i want to know your take Mm -hmm. obviously because you're my guest here but uh my take is really simple you know um i'm not boasting here but i I put in time in the arts too nowhere and i don't have the experience like you uh, like I wish well, I, did. I, I haven't watched I, that much of you, but I've seen little clips and that's why I'm talking to you. You have some very good sensitivity. You know how to move in and, and kind of change through different ranges. It looks like, and, yeah. and really how to mix things together. So, I mean, that's, that's why I'm like, okay, this channel's not the biggest yet, but <laughs> you, you have knowledge and that's, that's why I'm talking to you. So we could be, have a, a, hopefully a bit of an authentic conversation that can help people expand their knowledge and be more open-minded and, and, and push, the arts forward, which is maybe one art. It's all the individual art. I don't know. Yeah, no, I love that. I'm, I started training kind of like you. Uh, I started training when I was uh, 10 years old. I'm 52 now. I probably took about 
three, four years off because of personal things and, and things like that. But, uh, you know, that's a good 35 years uh, in the arts. Now, it's nothing to brag about because I'm it, the, it's a curse, actually, because the, the, the amount of time I put in, I've met so many people who've checked my ego. I've met so many people who've basically taught me that, yo, you need to learn this now. Right. And and and, uh, you know, like I, I put in like, say, 14 years in Shonru, uh 12 years in Kempo, um, you know, two years in Shaolin Gong Fu, uh, five to six years in combat sports and, and and then seminars all over the place and touched hands with all kinds of people. Um, and every time all throughout this duration, I've been beaten, submitted, checked, uh, you mm-hmm. know, you think you're good until. Right. And, and, and all this stuff. And, you know. I don't, I've stopped criticizing, you know, I used to, criti- I mean, I was young, I used to criticize all the time, but I stopped criticizing now, you know, and, and uh, one of the, I had a conversation with Rokas and uh, I like his, I like, I like his, his presence online. I mean, I, I like his, uh, his video uh, production quality and I like the fact that he's always questioning, but I, I posed this question to Rokas and I said, you know, why do you feel the need to question so much when, when, if you've put in the time, uh, you'll see, and I don't mean this as a slight to him uh, I said if you put in the time you'll see that there's no need to question because just just receive it when you receive it you'll see that that all these things work it's just a matter of studying you need to have that study ethic and and like you said uh, be that anomaly right like be that person that's gonna test is gonna read it's gonna study and all this stuff so like but what I'm trying to say to you is I've put in all this time to know that all these things work um, and that's why I brought you here. Cause I wanted, I wanted your answer on functionality. And I think you've answered it. You know, you need your base, you need your spinal structure, you need your sensitivity and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Dan, you need to play, you have to mix combat sports in there, right? Like, so my, my question to you is what's the value, uh, is, is there a value in mixing combat sports, traditional arts and combatives? You know, and, and and being open to learning all of these things together. I think, yeah, I would I would say so definitely. Because you're doing that, right? I'm, you're I'm doing that. Always done that. I've always done that. Yeah. You, you, even you could be a great sport fighter, and he's so cocky, like no one could beat me. And then he right. gets hit hit with a metal pipe in the back of the head. Yeah. He gets stomped by eight guys. Doesn't matter <laughs> because right. he doesn't know the combatives aspects. That oh. I should take the guy seriously and put my hands up and be looking around like, hey, man, I don't want any problems while you're checking the six. So you have to have that combatives uh, mindset. Even a great sport fighter could end up dead because he doesn't take someone. And and sometimes I've had to stop bouncing because people have threatened to kill me. I'm like, okay, dude, whatever. I, I stopped getting even a little bit of adrenaline. Yep. So there's times literally I I stopped bouncing at a bar. I made a lot of money at a big club in Hollywood because I'm like, man, that guy might really come back with a gun and shoot me, you know? And I didn't even get a little bit of adrenaline and a little bit of fear is good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like a little, a little bit of a, a fear that, okay, at least like he might pull a weapon because he's so scared and being so mouthy because he knows my presence, I would destroy him. He might stab me or shoot me. Yeah. Like you have to have that much respect of, of, of mortality, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's one reason like the combatives guy that, or the sport guy, a functional sport guy, kickboxer, jujitsu guy, MMA fighter should be thinking about combatives. Yep. Okay. And then, why should they all not go, well, that Kung Fu or Keto thing sucks like the young guys online do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> why? Because why are you so focused about saying everything, what sucks, instead of focused on making yourself better? Nice. You know, yesterday I was, uh, I was, talking, about, uh, I was talking about this too, uh, not yesterday, a couple of days ago on the weekend there, I trained with, uh, one of my good friends, uh, shout out to Scott Taylor, Taylor Jiu Jitsu. Uh, he's a, he, he's a, he's, he's a beast. He's a short little, short little guy, um, Japanese Jiu Jitsu player, uh, but cross training and all kinds of arts. Um, and he was just saying, you know, people, the internet, man, is so full of judgment, you know, uh, why don't you guys just shut up and train, just shut up and train, you know what I mean? <laughs> 
the yeah. answers will come to you when you've done it long enough and you'll yeah, start to your man. own answers for your Amen. own body type. Oh, that you style know? doesn't work. Well, yeah. you you work. Either you work or you don't work. Oh, I know I, love I that. work. I love that. That style doesn't work. Well, I can't make that work. Well, you suck. I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, I'm a school teacher, right? And I tell I tell the kids the same, the, more or less the same thing, but in an academic context. And I tell them, I said, listen, you know, you know why your math, you're getting bad math, mar- mar- bad math marks. You're not putting in the time, right? And they, they don't want to hear this. You know why you're writing? You know why your sentences don't work and your sentences lack detail because you don't practice writing. Get in there, you know, practice the drills that I'm teaching you. Like, come on, man. Techno- <laughs> I mean, no, technology is making a horrible, lazy world. Yeah. Yeah. It's too many options. You and I are pretty much in the same kind of ballpark. And I think our values are more or less the same in a sense that, you know, you study, you're diligent, you train, you experiment, you, you know, you, I don't have a fraction of the skill that you have, but I think it's safe to say that I have the same kind of aptitude as you, right? Like I, 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 I train, I'm not shy to, to say that or, or scared to say that I suck at something, you know, um, if, if I do, I, I need to, I, I would love you to show me where I went wrong mm-hmm. so I can improve on it. It's that simple, right? But From uh, what I've seen you, I mean, I, yeah. you get it. I don't know how much jujitsu you've done, yeah. how much judo you've done. So in the grappling aspect, maybe you need to do more. Oh, oh big time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think that, but, but I mean, from the little things I get, I'm like, okay, this guy, you know. I'm I'm very like like what I did the playing in the park with that guy the other day like yeah. me and you did wrestling drills but trying to lock each other yeah and we did plum clinch drills but we're trying to lock each other and throw each other and then yeah. we added in knee strikes and punching the body and MMA gloves and uppercuts yeah and if we could pull off locks or throws on each other you like I think you would be very fun to <laughs> to 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 from just because I can see just a couple seconds clip you have in a couple of your videos I'm like oh okay. So I can see that you have that sensitivity and that that awareness. Yeah. So I think I mean we both have 35 years training in yeah. different styles. Yeah. It just sounds like maybe in the grappling you're a little less. Yeah. And yeah, correct. You know yeah. you didn't have the competitive experience that correct. I know you played yeah, MMA correct. and full contact and yeah. stuff like that. So I mean in that way I had more experience. But as far as years in and studying different styles and being open minded. Yeah, we, we kind of are on the on the same wavelength. Yeah, and I, I my my coach uh, my coach Sam says he goes, you wasted your time in karate. He goes, you should have trained with me. Uh, and this and that. And, you know, I I I disagree. I, I agree and disagree. I I agree in a sense that uh, you know I I kind of wish I did uh, more combat sports when I was younger because oh I'm feeling it now, man. <laughs> but yeah. uh, you know um. Uh, but apart from that, you know, I don't regret my karate experience. Um, it's it's taught me a lot, man. It's taught me how to basically grind. It's taught me how to study. It's taught me how to take any curriculum and, and make it work, you know, and because of karate. So I'm grateful for that. Yeah, that's the brudo yeah. you get from studying yeah. karate or judo that maybe yeah. you get in, in combat sports. And that's yeah. why I recommend teenagers should be doing judo in the curriculum, maybe real karate. And then if he's an adult, you want to get into Muay Thai and jujitsu and yeah. stuff. Um, you know, that's great. And then after you get 40, well, maybe it's time to look at those Bakwa guys because I can only make it a jujitsu once this month because my knee's injured right now like it really is. You know, yeah. and I really want to be back on the jujitsu mat, but I should really, I'm That'd debating like I should probably wait to get an MRI on my knee first. So what what's what injuries do you have right now if you don't mind me asking? Uh, my whole body, my <laughs> my, my my lower back probably has slipped disc. Oh, my neck yeah. probably has slipped disc. Yeah. Bone spurs are probably pinching nerves. I have nerve problems the last six months. My yeah. ear, my cheek, my neck. Uh, wow. my knee got injured at SWAT school. It seems like I mean I've always had knee issues and M- MCL issues. Yep. And I have micro fractures in the back of my femurs. So but now it seems here. like now it seems like oh. there's some meniscus, some meniscus stuff going on, or something, something yeah. different than I felt before. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a little worried to go back in a jujitsu. I mean, I'm just kind of like playing through motions to exercise at this point. Yeah. And not doing a whole lot, but you know, you know, everyone sees me and they're like, 
oh my god, or especially if they recognize me on YouTube, their whole thing's like they gotta try and rip my heel off. Like, dude, chill out. I'm in my forties. Relax. I've barely grappled <laughs> in the last year, so like, chill. But they'll go with all their might. And meanwhile, I'm playing with them like this soft, yeah, 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 half guard or something. That's ego, man. That, that those like, guys are ego, man. If you're going with yeah. full power, would you really like me to go with my full power? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I I have a, a a cool question for you from uh, again from my coach friend. He says, if you were hired to train, uh, let's just say police or law enforcement, um, and in a in a four week or two month program, how would you teach them? Uh, what would you teach them? Just kicking from the ground, proper get up to base, making space. Because the guy's trying to stab you and shoot you, and you fall because you're tripping in doing a stack at a door, and there's gas masks. Like you got to know how to get up. You got to know how to get up and move and make space. Yeah. Technical stand up. They used to call it getting up to base. There's there's mm. the most common swing is a right hand. Yeah. So I, I teach head and elbow spear, plumb yep. legs, knee the growing. Either snap them down to a guillotine, shuck them down, snap them down to the ground to run out the hole if there's multiples. Or if they're so strong and bigger than you, they posture up, you blast them with elbows. And by the third or fourth elbow, most guys, if you have proper charging footwork, I teach in my Combatives of Street Jiu-Jitsu DVD, the guy's going to fall because he's tripping. No one can go backwards as fast as you can run forward. And so you're blasting them and destabilizing them, and most people are going to trip. So that's... That's definitely a number one. It's basically everything I teach in my my. It's four and a half hours. My combatives of street jiu-jitsu DVD is like all the essentials. I don't care if you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced. These are the essentials that I think will get you through the biggest, widest variables of drunken uncle. You need a wrist lock to guy <laughs> finger in your face. Right. To to a guy grabbing your shirt trying to intimidate you at a bar. To like you know full on people assaulting you. Um, or, or grappling on the ground where you got a gun, he's got a gun, he's got a knife, you got a knife, he's going for his knife in his pocket, and most cops mounted, and the guy's hugging you, and someone else runs up and hits the cop in the back of the head, or he pulls a knife out of his waistband, and he's shanking the guy from bottom. It doesn't matter if you have mount. So at the end, I teach some ground grappling positions I see. to control guy. I mean, I bounced for, you know, off and on over 20 years. Off and yeah, on. yeah, 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 yeah. So I've got I know how to control situations in the pre-fight phase and during and after and pin the guy and knee on belly double knee right or even eco pin how to control somebody. Yeah. Basically, it's it's what I put in there. So I mean, there's 15. I I I don't like Krav Maga paint by numbers stuff. Or right. Or see jujitsu paint by numbers. Crap. I don't like it. But you have to teach a little of it. So I do have 15. The, like common attacks and defenses mm-hmm. to teach the most practical stuff and even stuff that's kind of building blocks um, that helps your knowledge about spinal manipulations and things like that. So I have that in my DVD and that's all the stuff that I would be teaching uh, law enforcement. There's uh, get off my, get off the wall, get off anti-cage tactics. Yep. Uh, I showed that to a couple of the SWAT instructors uh, on the last day. Uh, a couple of my, I'm like, okay, so it's great for UFC fighters, but um, okay, I'm entering now with uh, M4, and I we didn't realize in the hallway, a big guy happened to be there in his underwear going for his midnight snack at 2 a.m. when you're doing your warrant, and boom, huge guy's got you pinned with your rifle, and you're in gear and helmet, and that's a bad spot to be. Right. Can you even reach to transition your pistol if a big guy just got you shoved by the neck against the wall. So there's there's stuff that I I, I want to get out there to uh, the SWAT community, to the special operations community. Uh, cool. And it's just very hard. They don't have funding, budget cuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Navy SEALs. I mean, I, one guy watched my DVD, worked at SOCOM for 10 years, uh, you know. Some people are starting to pay attention. I'm about to do a seminar in Clinton, Texas. We're getting a lot of Army uh, people there right next to the base. You know, but it's hard to make things work officially. But they need it. All law enforcement needs it. A lot of first responders need it, quite frankly. 100%. I mean, yeah. That EMT is getting attacked. Firefighters getting shot at. You oh, know, yeah. The world, real, estate, real estate agents, man. <laughs> yeah. The world they they need it, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So 
you know, basics of being able to go have open guard and kick knee kicks. I mean, I had 10 guys trying to stop me when I was down. I did open guard. I got up to base, you know, did some Jackie Chan stuff. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's really important stuff. But you got to know how to knee and elbow. You got to know how to clinch. Spearing into a plum clinch. Yes. Big guys are all dangerous out here throwing haymakers. But yep. people don't know how to fight in a clinch. Yep. So yep. knowing how to Greco clinch, neck clinch, Muay Thai clinch, MMA clinch, whatever you want to call it. Knowing how to clinch and also keep your weapon safe if some bigger guy's clinching you and you carry a gun or a knife. Like, and knowing how to disengage from a clinch, disengage from a wall, disengage from the ground, get ups from the ground. It's all vitally important stuff, along with defense is the most common attacks, as long with knowing how to elbow and headbutt and having balance, base, structure, all this stuff we talked about. Most guys just don't know how to stand. They get their feet all across. How to throw multiple knees and charge knees, charging footwork, gallop footwork. The way I teach, it's not even like we tell you guys will sometimes throw a knee, but not really to hurt. Like you got to know how to just blast a guy. Combatives go forward with elbows yeah. and knees. Yeah, yeah. And you got to learn how to block with your shoulders. The stuff I teach in my 50 two series, I block with your forearms, block with your shoulders. Yeah, I love that. We stuff. talked about angles yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sucker punches. Yeah. It's not me squaring up to you. I square up with you. It's the guy who hit in a van with a stick that hit me in the back of the head. My real situation. Yep. I'm in a two-on-one stick attack now. The first wow. hit could have killed me. You know, it's the guys standing on the corner now, 15-year-old gangs, uh, that literally are, you're putting people in hospitals or killing them because it's fun to knock out old people or to yeah. steal a cell phone. They're all standing on the corner like they're just hanging out, and then, boom, they sucker punch this guy and stomp him on the ground. That's a deadly force. Yeah. It's a dangerous world, and you have to be prepared to protect yourself. And so I would teach you know, people that, and that's why I made the DVD. They usually guys fly in, they film for like three hours one day. I'm like, I did like eight hours, two days back to back. So let me stay in two days. I try, so I try, and, I, and there's some stuff I had to cut. You're running out of time. But I, yeah. fit, I fit it as much of the essential stuff to help dictate and control a situation and how to de-escalate verbally and with your hands and offense and how to handle things up and down the force matrix. Yeah. Uh, I debated that with Rogers the other day. I'm like, oh, yeah, so a Muay Thai guy beats an Aikido guy. No, duh. <laughs> Why are you arguing this still? Like, no, no, no. What the heck? Yeah. But does that mean – I have to not fight, not fight, not fight when a guy's building up his road range and his fingers in my wife's face and now we shove my wife? No. Or do I grab his wrist and throw him to the ground? Right. Like there's a point, maybe at that point I do Muay Thai. But if it, before that, if he's just pointing and kind of gave you one shove, if I could control it by just wrist locking the guy or maybe spinning him around and half choking, not all yeah. the way choking, but temporarily right. using a restraint hold on the guy, depending on what state I am. Right. Those are better options than, you know, having to, like, always – sometimes you have to. I'm not saying going MMA on a guy isn't the right thing to do sometimes. Sometimes it's the the best lesson someone could take. And in the old days, that's how stuff was taught. And they weren't taught to be jackasses online, excuse me, because, you yeah. know, there was actually repercussions to actions, which <laughs> repercussions lead to self-responsibility that is sadly – uh, uh, lacking in this world, uh, accountability, I should say. Yeah. Account, Self accountability is sadly lacking, and that used to happen when you were a dumb teenager, and even before that, like the, the kid would beat you up because you said something about his mama too many times. You were yep. taught to live the golden rule and have some respect for the teachers, your elders. Um, not saying you should not question some things if they're teaching you dogma or. Uh, political things but you know there should be respect for the elders and not attacking we're seeing you know random people getting attacked and, and all yeah. kinds of bad stuff in the world so if if you had a chance to train in a training camp uh with a contemporary pro fighter um in, in a combat sport who's it gonna be and why i got i trained with so many great guys already yeah the guy i didn't train with was john jones i mean John's an interesting character. I don't know. Yeah. We were friendly at one point. I don't know if we're still friendly. <laughs> you you got to take, you know, 
it's hard sometimes to separate a man and his mistakes than his actual martial ability. Yep. I mean, if you look at actually who he beat and, and a long run of former UFC champions, he smoked, I think, six in a row, Rashad Evans, Leo Machida. He went on this run. If you actually look at his record, he went on this run that it's really hard to not call him the greatest, even though the real greatest is probably Amanda Nunes when you look at her opponents and former champions and Olympians. Nunes, but John Jones, yeah. John Jones, it's hard to argue with. I mean, and yeah. if you look at the way he fought, really, John Jones was Bruce Lee, JKD, all right. the way up to kick you in the knee and eye jab. Yeah. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Worked pretty, worked pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yep. longest weapon, closest target. Yeah. It's a whole lot of JKD going on there, not the getting bashed in the head Muay Thai that his striking coach used to have as his style. So yeah, he's um, a very finesse fighter. Yeah. yeah so probably, yeah. you know, I don't know if I'd get along in his camp or not. I'd love to help yeah. coach, uh, yeah. but 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 John is is certainly an interesting guy. Anderson's already retired, and you know he might box. We'll see. Yeah. But Anderson Silva, you know, I was in, in the room with Anderson for three months. When I was yep. with Machida and, and all and Roger Gracie and all those guys. I mean, Daniel Cormier is retired now. Had he asked me this a year and a half ago, I, I love DC. I love his personality. I want to. I want to. He's like my man crush. I want to like go hang out <laughs> at his house and have barbecues with him. Yeah, yeah. He, I've only met him twice. Once was right after he beat Barnett, and so he was kind of out of it. And I went up and shook his hand and stuff after the mini press conference. It was so small, straight for us back then. Yeah. Uh, and then I saw him in Atlanta about a year and a half ago. And he was really exhausted. He walked in. I walked up, and he stopped and talked to me a minute. And we're looking at each other up and down because we're we're like literally the same size, which is crazy to think that was yeah. heavyweight champion beating people up. Because I'm yeah. I consider myself short, five ten and three quarter. Five ten. And, wow. Okay. You know the reach compared to like even the light heavyweight guys I I sparred like Down Young, who's in the UFC right now, you can, I mean, I did okay, but that's because of my trickiness. <laughs> yeah. My blitzing, yeah. my neo-striking system, I want to mention it, my clu- neo-striking cluster fighting system, really uh, <laughs> kind of proves that it worked when I'm 40, and here's a taller, younger, more experienced fighter, more athletic, more in shape, does it every day. You know, it was working out pretty good for me there. Um, but that's a light, he- current top light heavyweight, and that is crazy, but heavyweight man so i spent two two days at aka up there uh, but dc was about to fight so he wasn't sparring but i sparred k and Ertel walker so i spent two days up at ak and uh and, th- and then i've spent a, co- a couple different times AK thailand but i would have loved to have worked out with dc and right now i'd love to just hang out with him his commentary cracks me up i think he's yeah. a fun, funny dude uh, yeah. i think he would be i think he's down to earth i think it would be fun to hang out with dc invite me to a barbecue baby <laughs> I want to. I want to come. I want to come hang out with, with Daniel Cormier someday. Nice. Um, last question. Yeah. So it's a question on fight IQ. So, uh, what's your definition of fight IQ? How do you develop it? And you know, if you were to look at a fighter, uh, it's a bit of a loaded question. So, uh, what do you think fight IQ is? How do you develop it? And if you were to look at a fighter in terms of uh, the fighter's attribute makeup, in terms of like fight IQ and athleticism, what percentage would you allocate to say a good fighter should have, uh, like how much percentage of fight IQ versus athleticism? You know what I mean? Uh, Yeah. So fight IQ, it means doing the right thing at the right time. Timing. Yeah. Doing the right thing at the right time, making the, but not just timing in your technique, but making the right decision in microseconds. Yeah. In MMA, I mean, it's one thing in boxing. It's one thing. I mean, Muay Thai, that's high level. But in MMA, where I have to take in this information, slip this punch, and is that the perfect time to change levels and double leg the guy because he's coming in with too much kazushi, too much forward pressure? Mm. To change levels, to go from grappling to striking, but not only that, kicking to punching range to to almost trapping range, boom, we're in the clinch, need that lever, and now change levels and take him down to double leg or Osotogari or something. Mm. That's fight IQ. Real fight IQ is rare. Real fight IQ is doing the right thing at the right time. And the master of doing the absolutely right thing at the right time is Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. Mm. John Jones had the attributes, the reach, and everything else, and he pretty much 
does the right thing at the right time too. So to be a champion, you pretty much have to have good fight IQ. Right. But the guy who did it in processing speed, and maybe honestly, he plays video games and runs a Twitch channel. Maybe that helped him. I think it's probably <laughs> genetics. But he can process information and his reaction time like that. But reaction time has to come from psychological. Like, I have to think to react most of the time, most of the time. I have to, like, send this process to this, to this. So it's not just athleticism. He kind of had the perfect balance of everything with extremely, extremely high fight IQ to transition and go here. I mean, boom, I got the guy's back. Suplex him, arm bar him on the way down. <laughs> Suplex right. arm bar. So, you know, but even to be any champion, you know, I mean, they're so, so great now. Uh, Amanda Nunez uh, to uh, mm -hmm. Valentina Shevchenko. Mm -hmm. I mean, Valentina Shevchenko really does the proper technical things at the right time, keeping distance with the jab. Boom, there's the liver kick. Oh, they ran in. Boom, headlock, hip throw. Uh, Harai uh, uh, Ogosh. Yeah. Like, her timing are going through the ranges. So, I mean, in a way, a lot of this talk, like, I don't think Bruce Lee was some demigod that could beat up anybody. Right. As a 125 pounder. Like, I'm not that. But as far as like blending and through the ranges of combat and stuff, I mean, he really was ahead of his time. But I mean, also right. the Egyptians were fighting, the Greeks, Pancratians, 648 right. BC. Yeah. Uh, you know, things go back. But yeah, fight IQ is very important. Uh, attributes, you got a lot of attributes. So it's not just fight IQ and uh, what was the other thing you mentioned? Athleticism. Athleticism. But athleticism breaks down to strength, power, uh, cardio, muscular endurance. endurance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's so much that goes into it. Um, but I guess we could do it tertiary. You got fight IQ. You got uh, attributes, athleticism. Attrib it's called attributes. Um, and you got technique. So there's a lot of guys who can get pretty good B-level in UFC or even get in the top five. You can get at like number six or five. Yeah. If you're got you won the genetics lottery and you got all the attributes and you can hit really hard and maybe your <laughs> genetics lottery maybe yeah. your testosterone maybe your steroid cycle is really good and epo's yeah. on and all that yeah yeah okay before you get caught and you get kicked out for two years and you lose everything um but you got to have the technique too so th those guys aren't going to get number one usually a fluke can happen a knockout kind of i mean not a fluke but you know things happen but, you know, the top people have the technique, they have the attributes, and they have the fight IQ. Nice. And so unless so you have package. Yeah. techniques, attribute, and fight IQ, it's evolved now where you can't. Back in the day, there were some great fighters that really B-level athletes, you know? Yeah. B-level athletes, but they had solid technique and a smart brain and fight IQ. Those yeah, people, yeah, yeah. you know, but, you know, the, the Uber athletes are coming in. They're going, well, my football career didn't work out so good. My basketball career <laughs> didn't work out so well or yeah. whatever. Yeah. I mean, uh, but those guys might be a B-level banger and they get some knockouts. They get some decisions by getting top position because they're very, very strong and good grip strength and attributes. Right, right. But if they don't have the fight IQ, they're not going to become a champion. If they can't, they might, I know grappling and I know clinch and I know sh kickboxing. Yep. But if you don't know how to change between the yeah, rankings, the, the flow adaptation, and the adaptability we talked yeah. about earlier, right, if right. you don't have that, you don't, you're, you're not going to be a champion. So my question, so, okay, I, I'm getting a better understanding of this, but I want to zone in on this last thing. How do you develop this IQ then? How do you do in your from your experience or from your observations and other fighters uh, or personal anecdotes? How do you develop fight IQ? What, what would be a recommendation to the world here? Um, I think some of it's genetics and genetics. IQ. Genetics, yeah. Particularly my IQ scored off charts and like spatial relationships and things like that. Right. Uh, kinesthetic intelligence. I believe in multidisciplinary learning. Yeah. Yep. So kinesthetic intelligence, spatial intelligence, when we're talking martial arts, some of that's genetics and, and development and, yeah. and stuff, guys. 
Um, so th th that, you know, there's always that people are going to have different problems, you know, different levels of difficulty. Um, how do you develop it? Martial arts is being open-minded, being well-rounded, experiencing a bunch of different styles. And as I said, even like I have a ranking martial arts video just cause it was time to make it. Everyone else was, I didn't know what they were talking about. Yeah. And I don't like black and white like that, but I've trained in most of them. And even the yeah. ones I didn't train in, the point is yeah. I still went and watched different classes from different instructors. Yeah. I read about it. I watched movies or documentaries about it. Like I became knowledgeable yeah, on the studied. subject. Studied. And so that's also a lesson to kids you share. Don't judge because that's what someone told you to feel. That's what you feel. Don't have emotional responses without having intelligent knowledge. Do right. your own research. Do in-depth research. Study history. Don't yep. get something just from two memes you looked at. Critical thinking, man. The, your emotions are getting played with now instead of logic and, and facts. Love logic that. and yep. facts uh, matter. And so how do I get that uh, fight IQ is I got to have the knowledge of different martial arts. I have to ex yeah. experience training in different martial arts. And then I have to get experience blending them together through more yeah. knowledge of have done different arts like me and you, and we have to feel each other, and we have yes. to play out here a minute, and now we're out here boxing, and now we're out here kicking, and boom, now we're here in the clinch, and oh, 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 oh I got you now, because we were we were like 50-50, but boom, I got on top, and ah, you didn't spend as long doing jiu-jitsu and catch wrestling as me. So, uh -huh. uh, you know, and that, that's also a bit of a lesson in life, too, like blending. There's someone, you might have a problem here, 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 but maybe you're better than someone here or maybe you shine at being creative or maybe you shine at some people are better at this or better than that like i'm not that skilled with my hands and fixing things and tools and stuff yeah i actually logically like understand a lot but i didn't have the guts growing up to really be taught and learn and so i can actually like follow conversations and read an article and logically get a lot of things but like hands on i'm not i'm not the best guy for fixing a car yeah you know and, but if you are if you get it i get this a wrench and boom and boom i can change my oil, own oil kids are losing that too they might right. not have to go become a phd or a doctor or this or that you know what it's okay the world needs mechanics the yeah. world needs skilled labor yeah that doesn't mean you can't read books and get knowledge yourself before they burn all the books you can study history and get knowledge and study science and, and, yeah. and, and you know, study anything. And it doesn't matter if you're the janitor, even like you, you if you want to be a painter, if you got that skill, go do that if you can. But try to be as knowledgeable and as well-rounded as you can. And so back to martial arts, be as well-rounded as you can. Have the study of the history and the knowledge. But right. now you also have to get actual self-knowledge, which I guess is another lesson. Right. Is it's not only book learning. Right. It's self knowledge. And so people that I, I say it all the time now, been there and done that. Respect right. your elders. Respect yep. people that have lived longer than you. Respect people that yep. have have gone through bad, really bad stuff. But the people that have actually had trials and tribulations, people from other countries that aren't complaining about being poor when they have a thousand dollar cell phone and $200 yeah. Nikes. But people I've seen in my travels in Egypt and Malaysia and people that are actually starving to feed their child, not just whining about it. Uh, yeah. So you, you have to have the self knowledge and appreciate people that have self knowledge. So that means I can read about engineering and wrenching my car in a book, but if I've only done it once and that guy's been a mechanic for 30 years, yep. you know what? Let's maybe trust a little bit the guy that's been a mechanic for 30 years. What's the children out there, be authentic. Don't yeah. pretend to be something else or, well, I'm this, so I have to fit in this group. Or right. I self-identify and all this separation now. Well, I'm a white guy. I'm a black guy. I'm a Hispanic. You're a human being. Yeah, man. The only race is there's there's one race I know of. Yeah, human race. Human race. race. So Amen. <laughs> we're all alike in all the cultures. We all yeah. have more similarities and differences in martial arts, like yeah. you say. But you're also an individual. 
It's so bad. Yeah. Don't let anyone pigeonhole you. Be an individual. And that yeah. doesn't mean just because, well, they think I'm in this group and everyone else has pink hair, so I have to have pink hair too. Yeah. No. Just because you yeah. fit in with – that's your friends doesn't mean you have to. Okay. Or just because yeah. I'm the macho guy, the football player, doesn't mean I have to walk around like this and, and make fun of that nerd when that, that guy's a cool guy. Awesome, dude. Let's talk some Star Wars and play some D&D. You know, I was a big looking scary guy, but I protected the D&D role players. So the point yeah. is, like, be yourself. Be a genuine human being. In martial arts, look for genuine self-expression and and, and and try to tap into your own abilities and your own self-knowledge. Now, work on your weaknesses, but if you got something you're good at, and I guess what Dan the Wolfman's good at is I'm pretty good at different martial arts where I can fight you in all different ranges of combat. Am I the best Wing Chun guy in the world? No. Am I the best MMA fighter in the world? No. no. Am I Gordon Ryan, the best jiu-jitsu guy in the world? No. <laughs> well, I guess my superpower was being pretty darn okay at a lot of different things and kind of how to take little pieces of puzzles and yep. put them together. And so if that's my weird eccentric brain, I guess that's my superpower. And I guess the lesson is try to figure out what your little superpower is or your passion um, and, 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 but just, you know, but also respect the self-knowledge of others and try and gain your own self-knowledge of experience. Oh, experience I love it. In life matters, experience different things. Don't just judge those people over there or you're yeah. all this, or you're all that, or you all suck, or that culture's this, or that person's that, or that skin tone's this, or you're all racist, or you're, I'm sorry, I've never been anywhere in my life where everybody was the same and yet they're trying to make us all into these little zombie camps of hating each other and fighting yep. each other yep. instead That's... of the unity we're supposed to have the open hand in martial arts. Hey, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm trying to do. Like I, I it's a, it's a, uh, it's a tough, uh, it, it's a tough endeavor because um, for the bottom, the bottom line is this, I'll close with this. Um, you know, the whole karate unity mission is really it's more martial unity. Like I, 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 I threw in the word karate because that's my that's my love. It's like my favorite flavor of ice cream. You know, yeah. I love I love karate, but I I love all martial arts, right? And the more the more time I put in 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 training with such amazing people, I begin to see that you know we're all the same. We're all trying to get to the same result. We're trying to have a martial expression. Uh, expression uh, you know, self-protection and, 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 and assertiveness and, uh, you know, fending this off and getting in there, dominating this and that for self-protection reasons. That's the martial piece. And then we have the art piece, right, where we're trying to creatively express it and find, you know, efficient ways to express it and all these things. Every culture has that. So instead of saying, hey, we're the best, why don't we just embrace, right? So I, 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 I have a lot of talks with uh, a lot of people about this, you know, um, and I, you know, I had a talk with Rokus about this and some other YouTubers, too. And, you know, I, I say, you know, I don't need to question. Uh, I can understand why you guys question, but I don't really need to question. So let's bring everybody together. Right. So, yeah, that's my mission, man. <laughs> I'd rather I'd rather look at our likenesses and our differences. Yeah, brother. And everyone in different cultures, colors, whatever, all that stuff they try to divide us by. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know. The, the other day, it's, I had a great uh, day I set up my channel because I got invited. I finished my lesson, my private lesson yep. in the park, and this yep. guy comes over and he invites me over, and I hung out all memorial uh, weekend Sunday uh, with this whole big group from the Congo. There's like 35 of them. I don't yep. look like them, you know, but yep. they all embraced me. I embraced them. We had a great time. It was. Old school. Certain cultures still have that. They're trying to divide that family, and they're yeah. trying to divide the structure. And they had a sense of community. Yeah. And, hey, how's it going? I'm playing with their kids and hugging me and getting me a drink and like. That's amazing. That's how it should be. Yeah, man. Because we all have way more likenesses than we do differences. And yep, if we yep. have a differences, cool. Let me learn from that. Or wow, we didn't do yep. that. Cool. I don't appropriation we should yeah. all be loving everything man <laughs> like, I, I, tacos, uh, awesome i love tacos like you know like yeah. <laughs> we you know if we have something <laughs> different 
<laughs> you know, we learn about that, be intrigued by that, yeah, and, and embrace that and enjoy that and yeah, and love that and love e- and love one each other for that. Love each other for our likenesses. Yeah. And also love each other for our, 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 our differences and learn about them. And the more you learn, the more, wow, we're not as different as we thought. Yeah. Aha! Yeah. You know? yeah. And so oh, man. martial arts or anything in life, I think that's kind of the way. And unfortunately, technology and, and um, that's not how people want us. They want us divided and they want us depressed yeah. and they want yeah. us angry. And you can respect the history and be respectful. And you don't have to throw it all away, even. And it's good to teach the younger, and it's good for you to know, maybe. And maybe you should do it on your black belt test if that's how you decide. But to be so stuck in it, to let it wait, it should be something that lifts you up and you got insight from. Right, right. It should be yeah, something see, that lifts you up and you get insight from. Yeah, see, for, for me, that's that's what it is. Exa- I love how you said that. To me, it's a reference tool. So, like, it's like a bunch of tools that I refer to. Like, you know, if I... Uh, okay, so I have these mo- these motions. I've got these circular motions and stuff. Right off the bat, when I look at that, I can't really see. I I I just accept it for what it is. But then when I cross train and touch hands with all these other players who are actually using these kind of motions in play under pressure, I'm thinking, oh, okay, so I can use these kind of circular motions as I'll just tighten it up maybe as a parry and I'll slip do a slip entry and come in and mm-hmm. you know maybe go for a for a clinch or a collar tie or single whatever right. Um, and so I can, because of the blending and because of the studying and stuff, I can connect all these dots. Like, like at this stage of my training right now, if you were to show me something from any form, any style, it's simply because of sheer experience, I can take it and make it functional. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, that's, you can connect the dots. I, I mean, yeah. years ago I started really like my grappling knowledge kind of went boom Eureka, and I, I, I did kind of, I think, invent or refine some submissions. I figured out ways of taking wrestling moves to go into certain rare submissions to actually nice. take the wrestling back into the catch wrestling, not just the catch biomechanics of the submission, but how to actually wrestle into some things. I figured out new entries in the submissions that way wow. and stuff yeah. because the, the dots, I mean, literally, I, I've watched stuff. What was it? I was watch. I watched like ADCC something, and I saw something, and my brain went dink, dink, dink. Yeah. And I came up with something like really cool. Yeah. And that's, you know, we're kind of obsessive compulsive. The like yes. diehard martial artists that have done yes. it our whole lives. Yeah. Um, and and we should be creating and changing and evolving and yes. And, and what works in one moment doesn't work in the next moment. What works with yes. your body type doesn't work with my body type. What works with this opponent, his energy might not work with this energy or not in that moment. Exactly. Everything see, is, everything is, everything is one of my other new sayings lately. Same, same, everything's everything. It's all been the same and it is all the same. <laughs> yeah. There's only so yep. much biomechanics and physics to go around. <laughs> like we're yep. working we're working under the same rules, everybody. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I I uh oh man, this is awesome, man. I am so grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much for for the chat. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. We'll stay in touch. Nice talking to you. Thanks. Appreciate Chris. that. All right. All the best. Nice. Okay. Bye.